What's good, people? You already know who it is. It's the Loud Mouth Canadian. Welcome back. Hope you're here to stay. Please, 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 please watch the whole video, like the whole video, share the whole video, subscribe to the video, make love to the video, take it out the video, uh, buy the video a house, type, buy some kids. But yeah, welcome back. Today I thought, you know, given the recent events in the One Piece manga, we should go over some crucial members that we've seen in the anime and the manga. We should go over the Warlords. If you don't know who the Warlords is, the seven Warlords of the Sea are powerful pirate captains. They're usually very strong. They're usually... Let's just say that the ones you keep your eye on if they weren't a member. But the way it works is when you get a certain amount of stature, a certain amount of, you know, you're considered a threat basically. So the world government, they invite you to become part of the warlords. And when you, if you accept, what happens is you give them a portion of any treasure you get and they freeze your bounty and they give you a bit of leeway. They give you a bit of leeway so it's not like you're invincible to the law but at the same time you, you get away with much more stuff than other pirates who are not warlords or who are not aligned with the world government now this was going on for i would say three-fifths of the manga three-fifths if not three-fifths i'm gonna say half the manga before fujitora who's one of the new admirals he came along and he suggested that, who was it, Mar Marijua? Is that how you say that? Marijua? Yeah. He suggested that, you know what, they're pirates, Doflamingo effed up, Crocodile effed up. Let's just get rid of it. It's causing more harm than good. Let's get rid of it. We have the means to defend ourselves. We have the means to get rid of them. Why not just, you know, make do with what we have? And so the Waller system was abandoned you could say it was what's what it called relinquished and those pirates are now on the run now there was 11 11 different warlords over the time of its conception each being different each have been powerful in their own right except for one that you might see later on but i thought why not go through the list go through you know the best the worst who you like as a character what might happen towards the end of the manga and just yeah take it from there first up we have edward weevil this guy i don't know where he is currently in the story but i know when he was first like seen and announced and people were getting their first reaction to him people didn't really consider him a threat but the thing that made him let's say let's say recognizable and stand out was the fact that he was claiming to be the son of Whitebeard excuse me as a son of Whitebeard he wanted to claim their gold he wanted to claim whatever treasures Whitebeard had at the time he hasn't had much history in the manga he's only showed up several times um, he usually paired up with his mom. His mom claims to have been a uh, ex, a baby mother uh, of Whitebeard. But there's nothing to confirm that. And Whitebeard's former crew, you know, because Whitebeard's dead, uh, they went to go fight him. Simply because he kept claiming that, you know, oh, he's you, the son of our leader, the son of our captain, and we've never seen you before in our lives, never even heard of you. You need to stop claiming that you're his son. And the only, let's say, trait, the only figure that we can argue that he is the son is the mustache. He has the same mustache as Whitebeard, but apart from that, there's no recognizable traits. There's no, okay, yeah, this is clearly his son. And honestly, for me, I don't think it's his son. I think maybe because earlier 
in the history of One Piece. Whitebeard did have the woman in question on their crew, I think, or they did meet one time. But I don't think that's us. his son. They don't look like each other. He is pretty strong, but there's nothing to go on. I think she's just after the money. You know how it goes. The guy's not here to defend himself. Why did you wait till now to tell him when he's dead? It's basically a bum. Basically. I mean, you had all this time, you know, to come forth, to be part of the crew. You know, you wait till White Bear's dead, and then you say, This is your son. Where's the money? Where's the gold? As far as the warlord, yeah, he's strong. He is capable. He does, you know, if you want to see if he's a son based on that, then I guess you could go for it. But other than that, nah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I don't see the resemblance. I don't see anything. <sighs> honestly, honestly, he hasn't made much of an impact. I'm not sure what the plans are for this character, if I'm being honest. I don't know if later down the line, you might get a flashback and it's revealed to be, you know, his um, son. But other than that, no. No. I mean, plus another thing was... He did say he wanted to avenge his father. He wanted to get black bitch, but his mom told him it wasn't important. So that's another indicator of nah, she's just interested in the money. He does know Haki, but apart from that, nah. As as a warlord, I'm not gonna say he's not really important. And yeah, I think he's gonna be one of the first to be taken out, honestly. Honestly, because he hasn't done something in the manga or anime. He's only appeared a couple times, but yeah, that's that's really about it. If I'm being honest, okay. Next one, Gecko Moria. Now he was a he was a villain. We came across him doing the Thriller Bark arc, where he stole Luffy's shadow and put him in oars. This is where we met Brooke for the first time. Um, this is where. Akuma did that deal with Zoro, so he does have some history in the anime slash manga, but we don't know if he's alive or dead at the moment, because recently he was tricked by Blackbeard, and by he used one of his allies' devil fruit, because they killed his ally and they took his devil fruit, which was the one where he could go invincible, and because of this, he... Basically fell for the trap. One of the Blackbeard, you know, captains, Titanic captains, took his took her had a devil fruit. Sorry, I'm starting to lot. Had a devil fruit. She was able to transform into his ally. I forgot the ally's name. Maybe I'll put a picture up. But yeah, because she had like the, basically the nine tails devil fruit. She was able to transform. She looked like him, tricked him, and yeah. So we don't know if he's dead or alive or what they're using him for at the moment. Um, in terms of ability, he has the, if I could just find the name of the fruit. Uh, his devil fruit, I think it's called like the shadow shadow fruit. Let me see. He ate the kage kage. So he can control shadows, he can cut them with scissors, he can steal abilities, he can swarm enemies he can do a lot of that he can even like use dead bodies infused with shadows you can collect shadows with scissors it's a okay devil fruit if you know how to use it properly and so for someone like gecko moria yeah it's a decent fruit in terms of the character nah no ratings no ratings he tried to go up against kaido Kaido. He tried to go up against Kaido, but he was quickly subdued. Quickly subdued. And apart from that, he hasn't made much of an impact, but he still is a threat considering his devil fruit. He has a ship, which is basically an island. I read over this over the um, tier list for the best pirate ships in One Piece. Anywho. He's just, I don't know, he looks weird. He look cooler in the flashback. But apart from that, mm -mm. I don't give him any ratings. He does use like 
two scissors as shares. So he does use them as shares, but he uses them as blades at the same time. In terms of impact to the story, he was a villain. I'm not sure if he got kicked out of the Warlords after he lost to Luffy. But yeah. As a warlord threat, he's a decent threat, but you know, as we go through your list, we've got to cover some other threats, you know, some other people who could cause trouble if they really wanted to. Alright, next on the list, Bartolomeo Kuma. Now, when Kuma first showed up, he was a menace. He was a downright menace. It looked like he was just killing people. He would just swipe his hand and they would disappear. We don't know what happened to them. We don't know what happened to them. His nickname was Tyrant. Tyrant. Jesus. And he is obviously the they used his blackness for the pacifistas. So they look like him, even though they're robots. So they have his abilities. But yeah. Um, I think it was during the time skip he was basically transformed into a cyborg and so now his emotions, his free will is basically compromised because you know Vegapunk did his work on him, Vegapunk took that away from him so now he's basically a tool for the world government until you know he was saved by the revolutionary army now, if we talk about when he first showed up, just wiping people from existence and that, he was, oh, he was terrifying. He was terrifying. He would just show up. He was OP as hell. He just spoke so calmly, just like, if you could go anywhere in the world, where would you go? Oh, it was, it was just terrifying. Absolutely terrified. He's devil fruit. I think it's like the poor poor fruit in English. In Japanese, it's the ni ni nikyo nikyo. So on his hands, it looked like paw prints, paw pads, and he just used like a tremendous amount of force, tremendous amount of air, could cause insane damage. We all know that infamous moment with Zoro, where he took the damage out of Luffy and put it into Zoro. That was a memorable moment, memorable moment. That was before the time skip. Arthur was, was basically used as a slave, as I said before. But before he went off to be a slave, he was thinking, what was it? He stood guard the ship for the um, Shore Hat Pirates to make sure they got through, to make sure they had a ship when they got back. And then he went about his business. He was recently rescued so he probably will show up later on in the story when it all comes together like right now HQ has been blown up by the world government we don't know I think he's alive I will say he's alive it was more like a fake out death but yeah he's alive but I just realized he's a cyborg with a devil fruit so that makes him more of a threat I would say as a as a warlord definitely a threat Definitely a threat. Definitely. All right, next one. Trafalgar Law, the drippiest warlord, if you will. Sidetracking for a bit. This guy's drip is always on point. I love his hat. He's always wearing like a sick house jacket, hoodie. He's always has a nice fit. I always rate for his drip. But you know, Trafalgar Law, former ally of the Doflamingo Pirates. Now, a warlord just defeated Big Mom with the help of Eustace Kid. And when he first showed up, he was one of my favorites. He's, um, Oppie Oppie, you know me, if I'm saying that right. I thought it was sick. You could switch places with stuff. You could do plasma knife. You could switch mines. You could do a lot of stuff as long as you're in the perimeter of that dome. And there's a tragic backstory. The people on his island were sick, so they all died, except for his parents who got him some help, and they died. 
uh, him and Dr. Bingham's brothers became like sort of like a father son, big brother, little brother deal. Unfortunately, Dr. Mingo killed him, and Jafar got all, he ate the fruit, and he basically wanted to get revenge later on in the series. So he's been a what's what looking for? He's been a ally, a alliance with the Shore Hat Pirates, but now that's you know done. In terms of powers, he is a threat, as I said. You know, his hacky, his devil fruit is OP as hell. Um, in terms of his character, he is just like calm headed. He is good at strategizing. He's good at coming up with plans. He's good at coming up with ideas and solutions. And honestly, yeah, he's a great captain. A great captain. He's always had his head on. And compared to like Luffy and Yusuke's kid, definitely. I know he got the position of Warlord by bringing those hearts of those pirates from the Rocky Port incident, I believe. And then since then, he's always been a Warlord. He's always been a part of that alliance but since you know the warlords are no longer together that's no longer the case let's see what's his bounty his current bounty is whoa is that three billion yes yeah, three billion very high not as high as luffy's but very high and yeah as a warlord yeah he's a decent friend decent friend after taking out big mom of course of course Next one, Don Quixote do Flamingo. Don Quixote do Flamingo, sick villain. One of my favorite villains in the entire manga. It was just so cold. Another drippy warlord. Yeah, the Heavenly Yasha. Yasha, that's his nickname. Head of the do Flamingo Pirates. He is Devil Fruit, the Shring Shring Fruit. OP as hell. OP as hell. He's a former world noble and he wants to, you know, destroy the world. He wants to see it burn. He's, he's, you know, some people just want to see the world burn. This is that guy right here. He is cold. He's one of my favorites in the whole anime. His um, dad was a good man. His dad wanted to teach his son to be humble. But because everyone hates the world nobles, they didn't like him and they ended up Shringing up him and his dad and his little brother, causing him pain. That's when he discovered his conqueror's hacky. From there, he went on to create his crew, build it up, and then he joined the warlord system. From there, he took over Dress Rosa. He got the other king kicked out, took it over, and he held it for a number of years before ultimately the shaw the sh hats turned up, kicked his ass. And now he's in Impel Down. But the thing about him is we're definitely gonna see him again. Because the level at which he was he's kept in at Impel Down, it's just him in there. It's just him by himself because he knows something the world nobles don't want anyone else to know. And it's been said that they they want to try to kill him. They want to kill him because he knows something vital something that no one else should know so i think he will turn up again he will show up this was not the last we've seen of doflamingo he is definitely a threat he is one of the few characters in the anime to have awakened his devil fruit we you know Fuji, not fujitora akainu did akuji did luffy did and I think Katakuri awakened it, as well as Law and Yusuke's kid. But yeah, he is very capable. He is, his combat skills are very high, nearly invincible. And yeah, he's always been that slick character, that one that's cool to watch. But yeah, yeah, as a warlord threat, I'll say very high, very high. Next one, Crocodile. You know, I always have respect for Crocodile because he gave Luffy his first L in the series, you could argue. Because he was the one, he was the first villain that Luffy went one-on-one -on -one against 
and he lost. He is the leader of Baroque Works, which is all like a crime syndicate. He took over Alabasta or Arabasta, however you want to pronounce it. But yeah, since then he's just he took that L from Luffy, he was in prison and he escaped basically. And recently in the manga, him, me, Hawk, and Buggy, they side up. Oh god, what's it called again? They start cross guild, that's it, cross guild. It's basically sort of like a reverse of the wanted system that they have. So instead of people going after pirates, it's pirates going after you know navy soldiers admirals captains just trying to make just trying to even the odds and so he and Doflamingo are quite similar in the sense that they start off as normal pirates they didn't make it to like yonkos or you know what's we're looking for pirate kings but they made it up to a high enough significant rank to get the notice of the government and so because they were warlords they were let some things were let go and they were able to take over Arabasta and so he held it on for ages and ages and ages until once again Schwartz straw hats took over no they yeah they took over beat him up and freed the island his devil fruit is pretty good, it's the sand sand fruit. He has trained it to the point where it's almost an unconscious reflex, so he doesn't really take damage. But it's been recently, well not recently, but it's been known that he knows Haki, but he just didn't use it, we're not sure why. Maybe he just learnt it in prison, but or maybe he felt like because Luffy was such a noob, he didn't need to use it. But yeah. Anyway, uh, Warlord ranking, I would say he's very high, especially with his cross skill he's part of now, and yeah, he's very smart, very capable, he wanted to kill White Bear, but <laughs> no one kills White Bear, White Bear just decides to die, so that's on him. Next up, Draku Mihawk, I think he's the only one of the seven Warlords without a Devil Fruit. But he's the strongest souls, swordsman in the world. He's the strongest in the world. He used to be known as the Marine Hunter. So he used to go after the Marines and had a rivalry with Shanks, which he stopped after Shrank, Shanks lost one of his arms. And yeah, he trained Zoro. And there will be a fight between him and Zoro. Just to decide once for all who's the best. And I'm looking forward to that fight. Honestly. Honestly, now his attitude and character is different from all the others because he just seeks to chill, leave him alone, let him chill. He's done what he's had to do, let him be. And um, recently, the world government has used his likeness I'm not sure of his abilities, but his likeness to make more pacifistas, stronger ones that look just like him, but with wings. So that's something to look out of. He is working with Crocodile to make the um, Cross Guild, which is going after you know Navy members. And he wields the sword. Oh, what's this sword called? There's so many names. It's so hard to keep a track of. The name of the sword is what? Momentito. I can't find it. Where is it? Sorry, I had notes made, but I really can't find it. But yeah, it is a. Uh, graded sword it's one of the few graded swords in the entire anime manga whatever you want to call it but yeah he's a giant sword in fact it looks like a cross but yeah he's hacky he's impeccable i think he knows conquerors i think he knows conquerors but yeah he has great eyes great hacky he's definitely a threat definitely but the thing about him is he doesn't have a crew he doesn't have like this large amount of people working under him he doesn't have like allies, he just does it for himself and that's why he is a threat. That's how strong he is, how capable he is. All right, next one, Buggy the Clown. This guy, I don't know, honestly speaking, right? I don't know why he's there. 
because it's just there all the circumstances, you know? Just good place, good timing. And he's now a warlord. Now he's, now he's a Yonko. He's moved off from warlord to Yonko. Similar to um, Blackbeard. I'm just like, why? Why? What for? Come on, man. It's ridiculous. I don't really like him. I guess he's more of like a joke character. Because he's not as strong as the others. He does know hockey. He's devil through the chop chop through allows him to separate parts of his body. But like, he's not strong. He only has a he has a he has massive force behind him. But as an individual, he's not strong. Luffy beat him in his first fight. In the manga, in the anime. In his first fight ever. Luffy beat him. He beat him. It was clean, efficient. And ever since then, he's just been somehow moving up since he escaped in Pearl Down. He was on um, Roger's crew when he was younger, but he hasn't done it. He's not like Shanks. Like he got some killer hacky or anything. I don't know. I don't know. As a threat, it's minimum. It's minimum. He's more of a figurehead than an actual threat. But yeah, he is part of Cross Guild. And yeah, that's it. Very quick one, not much to say on him. Okay, I'm back. I'm back. I'm here. I'm alive. I had to sneeze. I'm not feeling too well. But hey, we move. Jinbei. Jinbei, the newest member of the Straw Hat Pirates. Very capable. Knows Fishman Karate. I need to correct myself. He does have a demo fruit like Mihawk, but he's very capable. He was the he was on Fisher Tiger's crew, and then afterwards he started his own crew, amassed you know a good bounty and joined the Warlords. Now he is one of my favorite characters because he's so slick, and currently now he has the third highest bounty of the Straw Hats, right below Zoro and above Sanji. And here's a question: Do you think? Jinbei could beat Sanji like if they were bitter enemies do you think they could beat each other I would love to see that fight and him and Ace had a fight that lasted days and it ended in a draw so that could be an interesting fight to watch um, he just recently joined the One Piece crew he is very honorable the fact that he chose to stay behind when the plan with Big Mom went awry he said, look, I need to deal with this problem first, or afterwards I'll come and join you. And he ended up joining them with minor injuries, at least that we know of. Um, he has connections to, you know, the Fish Kingdom. He's very highly respected in there. Well, yeah. He is a fish karate prodigy. He is very capable. He knows nearly all types of haki, but yeah. Yeah, he's very good. He's a very high threat as well. Very high threat. Okay. Second to last one. Boa Hancock. She's a creep. She is a creep. And I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. She is 29. 29. And Luffy, he's just. I think he just hit his 20s. I think actually let me search this up. Luffy age pre time skip. Yeah, he was 17 when he met Luffy. Yeah, he was 17 when he met Boa Hancock and you were 29. And you wanna marry him? That's weird. That's weird, bro. That's weird. But yeah, she is the leader of the. Who was it? What's your crew again called? The Kaja Pirates. She has the Love Love Fruit. Basically, the Medusa Fruit. So, if you have feelings towards her, you will turn to stone, which most men do. She's a. Okay. Looking fruit. I mean looking woman, not fruit. She's not fruit. She's an okay looking woman. I wouldn't say she's the best looking in the series. That goes to Violet in my opinion. But yeah, she is attractive. She is in love with Luffy. 
She is the uh, Empress of the Kaja, where she's from. You know, Amazon Lily. And yeah, it's a threat. Yeah, she's very much a threat because most men find her attractive. I'm not sure she, I think she knows, yeah, she knows Haki. And her fruit has lots of different abilities. You know, can shoot arrows, turn people to stone. She knows a good form of martial arts. But yeah, she's, she's a very, very, you know, decent threat in the series. Not towards One Piece, but I mean, the short hats, but yeah. She has a tragic backstory as well because she was kept as a slave. She has PTSD as well, so she, you know, like that builds into her character. But yeah, she is. I'll give her. She's a. She's a threat. She's a threat. Not like Mihawk. Not like maybe Dolphin Mingo, but she's a threat. Marshall D. Teach. This is the last one. He's currently a Yonko. Currently, like the big bad of the series, the end boss. Has two devil fruits, which are the Yami Yami no Mi and the Goru Goru no Mi. He is making moves. The current theory is he has two souls. Is the son of Zebek? I think that's the guy's name. Is it Zebek? No, Rocks. The son of Rocks, which was you could argue is the pirate king before Roger. But yeah, he is a threat. He's currently held up at where is he the pirate paradise as a master giant crew yeah he's a yonko he is a threat and um yeah he's one to watch near the ending of the series he is after the world peace you know he's after the one piece but wants to destroy the world i should say and yeah right now he's just chilling making moves he's trying to hunt down other devil users he's trying to make his name well yeah he already made his name but he's trying to you know just become powerful he was the one that got ace killed he's the one that has a similar dream to luffy but went a different route about it but yeah he's one to watch towards the end of the series all in all these warlords are like they're very capable very powerful as i said before i don't think weevil is going to be very important um boa hancock not really blackbird is after her devil fruit but that mission failed they grabbed sabo instead uh me hawk crocodile and buggy they're doing that cross guild thing so we're gonna see how that pans out but yeah that's about it you know jimbe's on the short hat crew kuma's back where he is and yeah we're just gonna see what what happens later on but yeah, thanks for listening, thanks for watching. Thank you for your time. Let's just see where this goes, you know? Let's just see where it goes. I'll catch you in the next one. Alright.